Hey, it's Lucy. How much is a PhD going to set you back? In the UK, graduate tuition fees for the academic year 2017 to 18 are a lovely £4,195 per year. Bear in mind if you go to a collegiate system university like Oxford or Cambridge, they charge you college fees on top of that, making it more like £7,216 a year. And if you have the audacity to be from outside the EU, that's £19,335 per year minus college fees for you. On top of that, you've got to pay for accommodation, and you'd better check out local rent rates because you could be forking out an extra £100 per week depending on your postcode. On top of that, there's all those other annoying things you need to live, like food, hot water, tea bags. The University of Oxford estimates that general living, which they identify as food, accommodation, personal items, social activities, study costs, and miscellanea, will cost you between one to one and a half thousand per month, or twelve to seventeen and a half thousand per year. Add that to the fees, and that's more than sixteen thousand pounds per year, absolute minimum, or nineteen thousand a year if you're in a college system. That is a lot of money. So thank goodness there are so many ways to fund a PhD these days that it doesn't need to be a major concern when applying. I'm not a Guardian article with exhaustive lists of all the weird and wonderful ways you can go about this, but here are some of the most popular. Option one, self-fund. If you take the time and effort to save for years to fund your own PhD, then you obviously really want it, and I have the utmost respect for you. However, if you're lucky enough to have money from elsewhere, like like family or sponsors, do make sure you're doing a PhD because you want to and not just because you can. Option two, apply for a set project. Supervisors will often advertise projects that already have funding through sites like findaphd.com, society newsletters, departmental websites, or even just Twitter. All you have to do is prove you're the perfect candidate like a regular job interview, and the fees go out the window and the minimum wage stipend soars right in. Option three, scholarships. Sometimes you'll see positions advertised that don't have money attached, and scholarships are one way to deal with that. They are great if you're an overseas student when government funding might not apply to you, because often scholarships will cater to a particular country or university, but they're fiercely competitive. A quick Google shows there are entire websites dedicated to graduate scholarships, and often universities will have their own search functions. Option four, company scholarships. I don't really know much about this outside of oil companies paying their scientists, which I'm sure isn't as dodgy as it sounds. You could try putting a commercial spin on your research that companies might want to invest in, or look for industrial sponsors. Only downside of that is that they'll probably want you to work with them afterwards, and you might decide you don't want to. Option five, crowdfund. Apparently it's a real thing, who knew? Option six, the doctoral training partnership, which is what I do. This is a new course that sprung up in the physical sciences. It gives you half a year or more's training before letting you loose to design your very own project, all on exactly what you want to study. The DTP I'm on is funded by the Natural Environment Research Council. They pay my fees, give me several grand a year for research costs, and also give me that minimum wage stipend. The DTP for me meant I got to study Mars despite barely anyone in the country offering set projects on it, none of which were right for me. It meant I could go into a PhD without having a set project in mind, and that I could tailor my project to my interests. It's also just a great way to get funding if your subject is even vaguely environmental. For instance, there are people in my course looking at fungal diseases in trees, modelling African droughts, and then there's me looking at the Martian atmosphere. So if you are a chemist, biologist, computer scientist, physicist, archaeologist, geographer, geologist, the DTP is on offer up and down the country, and I would certainly recommend it. I've put a load of helpful links to the things I've talked about in the box thingy below. If you have any specific concerns about financing your PhD, please put your questions in the comments because I or another viewer might be able to help. And I really hope this video has made you feel less daunted about the cost of a PhD and given you some ideas of where to start. For current students, how are you funding yourself right now? Let me know how that's working or what advice you'd give to people just looking. And if I've missed out anything obvious, please tell me and other students. Like I said, this is not an exhaustive list, so please do your own research if you're on the hunt for the money. Thank you for watching the PH Diaries. Until next time, take care.